Hi everyone, this is Dr. Tracy McCarthy. Thank you for joining us for our continued examination of Babylon and John's vision in the book of Revelation. If you haven't listened to the earlier discussions related to this issue, you might want to check them out first and then come back and check this out so that everything hangs together. And so what we see in looking at the earlier examination is that Babylon represents these major rulers, these movers and shakers. Babylon represents the major merchants of the world historically, even the major religions of the world. And so we also see that Babylon is tied to that dynamic of the mitre. And that mitre is, of course, related to, correlated with Mithra which is correlated with more. What we also see is all of this fits under the umbrella of Shem. This is noteworthy because many individuals have been given the impression that Shem is the elevated brother in terms of Noah. Um, he's the elevated son. He's the one who is at the top of the hierarchy. And so if you look at this whole dynamic of solar worship and Shem, then that fits together. Uh, what we also see is that with respect to this mitre, it denotes headship. It denotes a royal priesthood, a priest caste. You also see this in the practices of Jacob, and we'll talk about that. And so you see that, according to the narratives, that these elements from Babylon spread from Babylon throughout Europe, Asia, America, and Africa. And you see this discussion about this in the book of Habakkuk, where the Babylonians or the Chaldeans were going to overrun the world essentially and so it's sort of interesting when individuals talk about Shem being in different places uh, it's presented as if Shem is some sort of victim in all of these places around the world however according to the biblical narrative Shem is the perpetrator of all of these wrongs around the world with respect to the indigenous people and so according to scripture, Shem is not presented as this innocent victim around the world. And so one of the other things that you might have noted if you looked at the resource that was provided is that this whole dynamic of the Babylonians, uh, John's vision, uh, the mitre, the mithra, the moor, all of this is tied to this idea of the shining ones, the praised ones, the celebrated ones. And so there is this overarching theme about illumination, but it's not about illumination in terms of giving forth, you know, sort of physical light. Um, the illumination is about insight and special knowledge. And so that's what's tied to Shem and this idea of Mithra or more. And so we're going to look at that. And as a reminder, the depiction is of the mitre, that ecclesiastical headdress. And looking at this etymology information, you see that the mitre is not only associated with this bishop's tall hat, but in terms of etymology, it's also related to the idea of friendship, the god Mithra, and also the Russian myrrh, indicating world peace. And so predating the bishops wearing the mitre, you have this as a part of the headdress of ancient Jewish high priests. You also see that the mitre was worn in Asia Minor, so in Turkey. It's also noted that with respect to Rome, the mitre was seen as something that was a mark of emasculation. And now we're going to turn to this dynamic of the mitre being associated with Shem 
and both being associated with this idea of solar worship. And so if you recall these depictions behind the mitre, you see this halo crown going on there. And then with St. Maurice, you see him with the crown, the garland, uh, that's his crown. And then you see yet a solar crown behind it. And so in this instance, you see this solar crown, the mitre being associated with royalty and priesthood. And so when looking at the relationship between the mitre, Mitra, Moore, and Shem, you see this running theme about light. In fact, in some transliterations, Shem is understood as the sun. And so we're talking about a solar deity. And then you see that Shem is understood as a solar deity. And so Shem is also presented as God, G-O-D. What's also noteworthy with respect to Shem is that in the scripture, these running narratives in the scripture paint Shem as in eternal competition with the entity known as the creator in scripture. And then you see this final manifestation of that in the book of Revelation when John identifies Babylon as this major entity that is a major enemy, which is Shem. You also see Shem manifested as the sun indicating illumination. But the illumination is not simply about giving light in terms of what you can see. It's about the idea of scienter, knowledge. It's about science. It's about that type of illumination. And even with respect to disciplinary colors, you see that that science color is science gold, which is reminiscent of the sun. What you see in the New Nation text is that John Morris had a vision of Shem that was synonymous with the vision that John is having in this book of Revelation. And if you recall from prior discussions, Shem was related to heaven, sky, the sun, and the sun god. Morris also points out that in terms of physical light, that Shem is associated with candles, the use of candles, and specifically the use of candles in religious ceremonies. And so you will see this manifested in terms of the creation of shrines. And of course, you also see this in terms of the Roman church. And as a reminder, Morris breaks down how all of these different languages are understanding the word Shem, these transliterations of Shem. And you can see here that in Hindu and Turkish, there's an understanding of this Shem word as candle. Again, placing Shem in this deity status, you see from the Assyrian, the Hebrew, the Fula, the Arabic, the Persian, it goes on and on, that Shem is identified in terms of transliteration as that which might be heaven, the heavens, the firmament, ray, sunshine, and the sun. You also see this indication in scripture that Shem is associated with the sun and idolatrous worship. And Morris goes on to point out the magnitude of this solar deity worship among Jacob. And so it indicates here the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the places around Jerusalem. They also burned incense to Baal and also to the sun. And so he also goes on to indicate that in Ezekiel and in Jeremiah that there were indictments on the children of Jacob because they worshiped the sun. And so what Morris is pointing out is that you have this collective of people understood as Shem. They understand themselves as Shem, uh, creating a deity named Shem. 
and then worshiping this deity. What's also noted is that they are going by the name of Shem. And so in many ways, what we're talking about is self-worship. Now we're just going to quickly look at multiple examples in scripture of this construct of more Mithra, Mitre, translating as this construct of luminary. And here you can see more translating as a luminary. In addition to Shem being associated with this solar deity dynamic and being deified as the sun and as G-O-D, we also see that this construct of Mitre, Mithra, Mor is translating as light, light bearer, luminary, lamp, and sun and moon. Additionally, this construct of Mor or Mora is understood as a luminous body or luminary, also relating to this idea of brightness or cheerfulness. So this might also tie to that idea of the construct being related to friendship. And this refers us to 215 Strong's or which is to be or become light. And all of this leads to this more esoteric understanding of light or illuminate with this idea of enlighten or enlightenment. And again, you see this identification of this or this more, this mitre, this mitra with sun, moon, and stars. We talked about that before because what you'll see under some Shem collectives, you'll see this focus on or this identification with sun, moon, or stars, or all three. And continuing on, it indicates that this idea of luminous can be taken literally or metaphorically. And so in the scripture, that is created by Shem, what you see again is this idea of illumination meaning insight. And this is at 5094 in Strong's. And here you see the idea manifested in the book of Daniel, illumination meaning insight. And here you see to give light meaning wisdom light and illumination. And when you look at this idea of illuminate in different languages, you see in the Irish, it's translating as enlighten. You see the same dynamic in the Scots Gaelic. And even in the Greek, you see this Shem theme of illuminate translating as enlighten. And so taken all together, what we see is this dynamic of John envisioning Shem as the enlightened one, the illuminated one, this solar deity manifested in a number of dynamics that you see in terms of Babylon. We also see that Babylon, Shem, the enlightened ones, the illuminated ones, are the ones who went forth, the Chaldeans, went forth and conquered all of the lands of the earth, conquered the people of the earth. And so John is putting forth the idea that the nemesis of the entity known as the creator in scripture is that which is embodied by Shem. And finally, um, with some discussions, odd things take place in terms of the discussion section and in terms of the analytics. And what is noted is that there have been a number of comments that have shown in the notifications, but have not shown in the actual comment section. And also, uh, sometimes there has been a reply, but when clicking on the reply, nothing shows when it drops down. Also, 
in the analytics, there are some noteworthy dynamics going on. There's also this situation where there's a section where YouTube can hold comments. And so this is that section. So it's indicating that by that little box there, that there is something that is potentially being held, but when clicking on it, nothing is actually showing up. So it's not possible for me to know what actually is being held or what is going on with this. If there are instances where you try to post and it doesn't post, go ahead and post on any other discussion that um, does not create this particular type of dynamic. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.